Now you can bring in your own HDR high dynamic range images to do your IBL image based lighting. So what you can do is you can go in here to texture import. I'm going to go ahead in here to go to my reference library, go to my HDR images. Just going to grab a random one here. You're going to see I have little icons giving me a preview of what it would look like if I used this. So this beach probe looks all right. So I'm going to grab this beach probe.hdr. We're going to go back up here to our background. We'll go ahead and turn that on. Choose our beach probe. Hit our light caps button. That'll go ahead and capture our lighting with the beach probe. And of course, we're going to want to make sure that we only have one shadow cast. If you if that's what you're looking go look uh, the look you're going for. So I'm going to choose that one. Go up here to macro. Click turn off shadows. And now when we hit BPR, it'll go ahead and render with those settings. Now, of course, if you want to, you can just use the floor lighting like we were doing before. So we turn off our outside cube here that we are using. Now you can see we have our background here. Let's go ahead and change it one more time. Let's go to our textures here. Import. Let's grab our campus probe. Go ahead and grab our background. Choose that one. We can keep our background off. Let's go ahead and hit, oops, turn the background on, hit our light caps, and then turn background off. And now when we render, oh, and also turn on your floor, and we'll go ahead and delete our cube out of our scene. So our floor is underneath our object again. Now this one might be a little overexposed, so if we turn this one on, you can change the gamma if you ever need to like change your gamma to 2.2 to correct it or anything. On this one here, let's say like maybe a 0.5 for the exposure, then hit light caps. You're going to see it starts getting a little bit more detail, so feel free to change your exposure and your gamma to get the result that you want, as well as going in here and just choosing one light source or a few light sources, and then turning off shadows for the rest of them. That'll give you a little more control, and also, you know, changing the direction of your main light, so when you go to BPR Render, the shadow is being cast in the direction that you want. Also remember you can change the color of any materials in your scene. You can polypaint anything in your scene. In fact, if I alt-click on this creature here, I think he does have some poly painting on him. Let's change his exposure to like 0.25. There you go, you can see that a little bit better. We can go ahead and turn our background off. And anytime you hit the light caps button, you're going to need to go back in here and choose your main light source here, and then go back to your macro, and then turn off shadows. And essentially what I'm doing is just turning off all the shadows except for my main light source, and then hitting BPR. And that's about it. And the rest of this is the same as in the previous videos where you're going over the vanilla render properties here. So you go in here to render, change your ambient occlusion and shadow properties here. Your details for your light cap information is here. Three is probably fine. You're going to want to probably change your SPIX up a little bit to give it a little bit better aliasing on your image. You're going to want to make sure your document size is the correct size you want to capture to. Under your render passes, these are going to be the ones you can export, or again, go to your Z plugin and then just do send to Photoshop if that's what you want to do. Once you've got it in Photoshop, you can composite, composite it all together. Again, on my Gumroad page, my QBrush page, the Intro to ZBrush Part 3 will walk you through those specifics, but hopefully that'll show you just how easy it is to go into your lighting menu, change your image, hit light caps, choose a light, turn off all the other shadows, even change the direction of your lighting, hit BPR. Oh, and one more thing, also make sure that, you know, live boolean is turned on, your array meshes, your nano meshes, your dynamic subdivision, all those should be able to be rendered within ZBrush. No problem, you don't need to export anything, you don't need to convert anything, it's all native within the ZBrush interface.